everybody. Thanks for joining me back again today. We're in the office and we're looking at evaluating a property for purchase today. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel below so that we can keep these videos coming at you. Today, we're going to take you through the process of finding a home you're interested in, building a spreadsheet to evaluate that purchase, comparing the AirDNA data to look for the potential income, and then evaluating whether this is a good purchase or not. I'm also going to touch on some of the things that it's important that you make sure you include in your budget or at least plan for in the future. So let's get started. So here's an example of a house that I found that I'm interested in in the Phoenix, Arizona market. Full disclosure, I do not know the agent. I'm not involved with the sale of this house at all. I do not work for Zillow. This is purely a house I found that I'm interested in. So I wanna just point out a few things. The criteria I was looking for here was a four bedroom, two bathroom home that had been recently updated. I was looking for some characters such as exposed beams, which this house has in the living room and also I'm interested in a fairly updated home. The other key feature for me that I must have in this market is a swimming pool. So this house has that with a nice private backyard. So then the next step is figuring out, okay, at this price point, will this property make me money? So the next thing we need to do is jump over to our spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet that I've built to help me evaluate the property. So I've put the purchase price at the top and the down payment. In this particular case, I'm looking for a 10% down vacation home loan. And then you'll notice I have the expenses tracked here, both monthly and annually. Now, some of these uh, don't apply to this particular home, so I've grayed them out and others I'm not sure on, and that's why you see the question marks there. So you're gonna to wanna to build this out for your property. Now, if you don't know the area where you're going to be purchasing, some of these might be difficult to determine. For example, maintenance. In this particular area, there is no concern for snow, but if you're purchasing a property with some lawn, you may need lawn maintenance. So in this case, what I did to help me fill in these gaps was I used a little bit of Google to look at utility rates and Facebook group pages. So I'm a member of several different group pages where you can search things like pool fees in Arizona. And also you may know someone in the area that you can contact to help you get a better understanding for what kind of numbers should go in there. So if you can build this out ahead of time for an area that you're looking at, that will help you with quick evaluation of your properties. Now the tricky part is guesstimating your income. So down here is a little trickier to estimate. Your projected income needs to be a combination of factors, primarily the nightly rental rate and the percentage of time that it's booked. So in order to come up with some fairly good numbers here, you're gonna to wanna to use an estimator tool. My preferred tool is AirDNA, but you can also use something like Price Labs has a tool as well. This will cost you a little bit of money to invest in, so it's helpful if you've narrowed your area of market preference before you purchase that. Let's jump over to that and take a look. Here is the AirDNA data for this particular zip code in Phoenix. I chose to purchase just the neighborhood as this costs about $20 per month versus $100 per month for the whole Phoenix area. You can change your selections or add additional areas depending on how large of a market you're interested in. So the way you use this tool is it gives you the market grade overall, the average daily rate, occupancy rate, and revenue, and you can drill down to each one for more data. So let's start with average daily rate. This is a calculation of your total income divided by your total number of days rented. So here you can see average daily rate over time in this market. Now there are only 30 active listings currently in this little tiny area. So you're gonna to wanna to take that into consideration that there is a wide variety, but a very limited sample size. Here's the average rates. So it'll give you a breakdown of the percentages here. And this is where you're gonna to wanna to consider how you can increase your ADR. So I don't consider myself a 50th percentile type property. I want to be in the 75th or higher percentile. So I'm going to use that to help me come up with a number. Now you can see here 284 is the entire home ADR rate for this particular zip code. Let's back up. Occupancy rate. This is the other factor that we need to calculate. Again, 30 active list listings. 
you can definitely see the variation here and it's gonna have a high season and a low season, which you can see here. In purple are the entire homes, which is the data I'm going to compare to. Here, you can really restrict this down to the number of bedrooms. So I might say three to four bedrooms is the range that I'm looking in and get an even better picture that's closer to the particular home I'm interested in. That takes your sample size way down in this case to only 16 active listings. If you had started with a larger neighborhood view, you're gonna get a broader uh, result here. So just keep that in mind. And we'll see that this is fairly low, in my opinion, 50% occupancy rate. Okay, and revenue, again, this is a factor of ADR and occupancy rate, and this gives you some numbers. Again, I'm not even gonna look as low as the 25th percentile. I wanna be closer to the 75th percentile. So keep that in mind. This is gonna help you with your guesstimates. So let's go back to that spreadsheet and figure out how we can plug in these numbers. Okay, we're back to the same spreadsheet here, looking at nightly rental rate and percentage of book time. So here we could go down on this number from 350. Let's put it at 250 and see what that does with our numbers here. Notice our net in the bottom dropped way down to 16,469. And percentage of booked, we're gonna say 50. So I consider this worst case scenario, whoops, 50. 0.5. Worst case scenario, you're losing money on this property. So this really needs to be higher, around 350 and a 0.70, 70% booking rate. Now I'm looking at a net income of 42,000. What if I was down at a 60% booking rate? Now I'm closer to 30,000. This is where you have to decide your threshold for what is reasonable for you. Typically, when we're evaluating a property, I'm trying to find one that will give me a return on the cash invested within about three years. And when I say cash invested, I'm talking about the uh, down payment, the closing costs, the repairs that I need to make initially, and also all of the furnishings. So this number here in three years time needs to earn back all of that money. The other things you need to think about or consider including in your budget are Replacement costs. This is a big one. You are going to be replacing things like your sheets, your towels, some small kitchen items, silverware, plates, etc. These items will get broken or lost, so that should be part of your budget, but probably not in your first year. Consider starting that on your second year. Some other issues that might come up are things like pest control, uh, which may or may not be an issue in your area. Security and technology is another issue for consideration. Now, you should have things like cameras, but you're also gonna to wanna to build in the fees for the camera recording. And you may have um, smart locks like Wi-Fi locks that require subscriptions. You may want noise monitoring devices so you can make sure that your property is not too loud when guests are there. You may also want Wi-Fi water sensors. So depending on your level of risk tolerance, you may need to purchase additional subscriptions for those types of items. The other one that comes up frequently is firewood. Whether you have a fireplace inside or an outside fire pit, you may want to provide this service for your guests, but consider that in your cost and budget planning. So those are a bunch of other items and your specific property might have some special to that property. So think about that as you're looking at your purchase as well. Hopefully this has given you a good place to start and you're on your way to evaluating your purchase. Take care, see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Bye. I don't know what the hell I'm saying right now.